Hey folks, I'm back. Bridging onto the freeway next to a fucking semi. This filled up with some premium. For the bargain price of about 5.30 a gallon. Which is the cheapest I've seen it anywhere. Getting the uh, tank bag off to remove the gas cap is not a big deal. Just undid one of the rear straps and slid it over. Yeah, bike will do freeway. It's not where I want to spend any time though. My goal today is to head out here in some of these bumpier backcountry roads and see how the bike performs because this is one of the main areas I was interested in and that led me to this bike. Stuff exactly like this. Really bumpy, beat up, shitty roads. It's pretty windy today. I didn't think it was going to be, but definitely getting knocked around. If I get a passing opportunity, I would like to see if I can just roll on past this car in sixth. Too many cars on the road today. It's such a nice day, everyone's out doing shit. Don't blame them. Here we go. No problemo. The seat does kind of slope you downwards towards the tank, which I don't really like. I'm hoping the seat concept seat's a little more flat. Part of that's probably to try to lower the seat height so that the standover position is as low as possible. But it does create kind of a downward slope when you're sitting on it. I don't really have a particular destination in mind today. I'm just going to try to get out on the shittiest, bumpiest roads around and just see how this thing feels because that was really my, like I said, my primary motivator to switch from the, uh, I'd take Benson if I wanted to hit the gravel. I'm not sure that I do. Although, that might be an even better test than going all the way out gas point. I don't know, it gets pretty bumpy out here too. I think I'll just go this way today. Anyway, my primary kind of motivation to switch from the 1250 and get something more street worthy was something that could handle these kind of roads. And I think the other bike I came closest to wanting to buy, and I, I, I still want one just because I think they're such a awesome bike and such a cool way to build your perfect machine as a platform is the DR650. So does this feel better on the road than the DR650? I mean probably from a, for most people I think so. I think you'd prefer to be on this. For me, I'm, I would say I'm undecided. Exhaust sounds so good, did I mention that? 36 won't be bumpy, this is a really nice road. One of the uh, best motorcycle roads around. Especially if you take it all the way out to the coast. Does feel great on the twisties. I was just thinking after kind of getting used to this bike and feeling the weight of it and everything. I mean it's lighter than a full size adventure bike but it still feels like a pretty big substantial bike. It's even more impressive the stuff that Paul Torres does on one of these machines. It's just mind blowing that he's able to ride one like that. There is a gravel road here that would take me into Red Bluff the back way. I am half tempted to take it. Maybe I will. Maybe we'll do our first little bit of gravel. It would make for the more interesting ride. Yeah, fuck it. Let's go do some uh, off-road. So this bike's built for, right? Gonna take it real easy. 
First time on uh, gravel on a big bike. Go ahead and crack the visor a little bit, get some air. Fresh rain that shouldn't be too loose. Yeah, I definitely like to have those handlebars rolled forward a little bit. Yeah, it feels really good. It's absolutely beautiful out here. Hopefully we're still recording. Yep. Still some snow on the peak there in the distance. I'm sure it looks tiny on the camera because of this wide angle lens. So yeah, this bike's basically fitting the uh, same bill as the 300 Rally did for me in terms of street and gravel and fire road type usage like this. Uh, the 300L was also capable of doing black diamond trails. I'm sure this one is too. I wouldn't take this one because of the size and weight. Whereas I felt comfortable doing that on the 300L until I dropped it anyway. And then that was even a heavy bike to be picking up. I'm sure this one is, uh, well, I know it's very capable. Again, anyone who's watched Paul Taurus' video could tell you the bike's capable. I would not be comfortable taking it into that sort of terrain, especially not solo. That's what I got the KTM for. Right, we're back to paved. Bumpy beat to shit road, perfect for my uh, test today. Someday I'll go right or left here. That's such a weird feeling on that rear brake. I don't know what it is. It almost feels like it's, it feels like it's hitting the ground and dragging on something. That's what it feels like. I know that's not happening, but that's what it feels like to pull out in front of this truck. Get a move on, because I don't want to be stuck behind him. But today I'm going to stick to the paved section and head back towards Red Bluff. I will take that dirt road the dude showed me the one day. Yeah, this is versus the 300L Rally. It does feel better on the street. Just, you know, heavier bikes, you feel more sure-footed and stable. And it's got a lot more power, which was the thing that I didn't like with the uh, 300L. Which, in one sense, you know, people talk about it's more fun to ride a slow bike fast. I don't really agree with that. There is a fun factor or a novelty to it for sure. And you could just hammer that thing and, and turn it full throttle all the time, which I'm not going to do on this. Um, but it's not fun when you're trying to get around a car and you're looking for a straight section that's a quarter mile long to get around them. Whereas here, if I'm stuck behind someone, I know I can quickly zip around them. So, I don't know. Different bikes, here's our uh, dirt section. This is quicker than I remembered. Still recording. I don't know how much longer my battery's gonna last. I remember this being slightly more technical than the previous road, but still not bad. Not enough to make me shy away from it. Which again, this is uh, exactly why I wanted this bike. So if I see a road like this and want to take it, no problems. This will also take me back into uh, Red Bluff. It's a long way around. That's such a weird feeling on that rear brake. It's It's got to be the ABS. It's just the way the ABS pulses. You really feel it through the brake pedal. And it seems to be 
very sensitive. There it didn't. I don't know, that's a weird feeling. I've never felt that before. I mean, I felt ABS pulse, but it's really pronounced. Let's get going again. Yeah, it's got to be the ABS. It's just a weird feeling. Oh well. I know it's working. <laughs> 